most wives initiate divorce, not because they're abused, not because of drinking, not because of drugs, not because of infidelity, but just because they're bored. Hey, fellas, welcome. Mitzwatch, Ryan. If you are new to the channel, we're on like a episode 80 something on it. And the Mids Watch was, and I guess I don't give these history lessons enough. Mids Watch references the Midnight Watch that I used to have at the Naval Radio Station on the West Coast. And ideally on then I would put on old like CBC Radio 3 broadcast. You sit there and listen to some ASMR voice talking about some pretentious hipster book. And I'm like, I really liked the vibe. And so we do those here. Anyways, this one is a nice story about a guy who's finding out how what is valuable in a relationship changes over time. And I think this one's important because a lot of guys are very uh, devout Christian and they have, uh, as Rolo would put it, a beta buck side of relationships. Like everything you do has to be adding value. You have to be the provider. You want to be loyal and calm and you know work hard and that stuff and then this is a kind of a guy who figures out that there's a downside to that and most of the cause of current relationship issues are because women have too much security and so when they have all their needs met they really don't need you anymore past certain milestones but we'll get to there so this one's by a guy they call him he calls himself jan Sios, whatever the wife told me it's over yesterday she told me over six months ago that she's been trying to stay together for the kids. We have financial difficulties since I lost my job, but in the end term, I've been working a low paying job and still looking for gainful employment. She can no longer handle the struggle. We have two kids, 15 and 13. She has been pulling away for over a year and made new girlfriends who most are divorced. She never has had friends in this 15 years of marriage. This weekend, she went out for a drink without telling me with a recently divorced girlfriend. And I told her that this is not the way to act in a marriage. She left the kids at home by themselves without telling me where she went. I work nights. She's nine to five. She's been coming home late, some nights an hour or so late. The kids text me when she gets home. I follow her home to see if she's cheating and found nothing. Her phone has a lock and her Facebook password has been changed. I do suspect emotional cheating, but she told me she just doesn't want to come home from work right away. She has suffered from depression since she was 20 and hides it well. She told me she does not want to go for help personally or to a marriage counselor because she has made up her mind. She's informed me that the grass may not be greener on the other side, but she's willing to give it a shot. We still sleep in the same bed. She kisses me most mornings and we have a dead bedroom now for about six months. I've lost 40 pounds in the last year since starting to lift and clean up my diet before finding the sub. I have also changed how I dress before reading the site. I notice now that other girls are looking at me, which has not happened before marriage. I told her I'm not going to move out. She told me she feels sorry for me because I don't make enough money to support myself. Yesterday, she was irritated when she dropped the bomb. She says, how come I am not saying anything? I just listened and smiled, amused mastery, something else. I have not communicated with her in about a day. And she's also told me that she's lost respect for me. So that's a bit of a bombshell. Now, there's going to be a bunch. We're going to talk about... Uh, Jack Ten of Hearts. He's going to get into a look, really good breakdown from this, but I would just, you know, a couple points of my own at the end here. But as we start, the one thing here that I, I, I'm surprised doesn't get talked about enough is that always, it's always with cheating. Every guy assumes girls are always cheating every time they leave the house and that there's been a couple cases like this one. He actually, the guy hired a private investigator to investigate this scenario and what ended up happening turns out the girl wasn't cheating every time she'd leave she would just go in the library or to starbucks and sit there quietly it's not that she wanted to branch swing it's just she didn't want to go home to him which i find even worse but that's a funny aside so the next part is jack's contribution and he notices the three points he catches on are the financial difficulties the handling the struggle she's lost respect for me and he's like look man you're a low value male and your kids are old enough that your wife has moved past the security phase. If you don't know what the security phase is, uh, Rational Male, I think the second book, has this timeline which shows uh, how women change their sexual preferences over time. And the idea is in her early 20s, 
She's looking all for uh, the Cancun foam parties. He calls it alpha fucks, but it's it's all the excitement, all the you know tough guys, the bad boys kind of thing. And then around 27 or 28, they enter what's called the security phase. A lot of guys refer to it as the wall. It's where a girl wants to settle down, have a family. She feels baby rabies. And that is where a lot of these guys fall into this trap. That's why you notice a lot of your traditional conservative guys. They don't settle down until the girl's in her late 20s because that's when she wants a guy with a good job, who's good with kids, is going to be a great dad, but it's rather boring. Then the idea is at a certain stage, you know, usually around 35, sometimes later, these are never meant to be exact numbers, more so like just a, a general roadmap, is the kids are now old enough where they become self-sufficient and it reinvigorates the girl's want for the alpha fucks or the Cancun phone party, the dangerouses, the bad boys, that kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden, a guy will find out his marriage has been going great until the kids are like five, six, seven years old. And now his good job doesn't count anymore. His ability to be a good father, nobody cares about that. And this is why most divorces happen once the kids are at school age. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, back to the story. She no longer sees you as somebody who can add value to your life. You are a net negative to the marriage, and so she wants to terminate it. It's really that simple. I'm sure you feel like this is shitty, and it is. The harsh fact in life is that as much as we laud effort for effort's sake, using platitudes like 99% perspiration and life is not being knocked down but standing up afterwards, ultimately, the only thing that is rewarded is that the effort is translating into results. Those stories professional athletes love to tell about how hard they trained and grinded in the lessons they learned when they still lost the big championship but left unspoken is that they still finish second, which is damn impressive. That's why we respect them. The result of those massive failures, you know, a silver medal, an NFC championship ring, an ALCS pennant are still more impressive than 99% of us could ever hope to accomplish. So the sweat equity you think you've built up in your marriage is meaningless because the results weren't there for your wife. Since there is no ultimate good to defer to, you have to know what you want so that you can ask yourself the right questions. Furthermore, your failures did not come with consolation prizes that still had tangible results worth it to her or the family. So when we see people grind their hearts out to no results, we don't admire or respect them, we just sort of pity them, kind of like your wife's doing. Now, if you were marginally higher value as a man, this wouldn't be unfolding this way. Your wife would demand you move out and you'd tell her to go fuck herself and then you'd get in a really bad argument, but also, possibly, have makeup sex afterwards. Love and anger are very intense, very intense and extreme emotions. And that anger would at least indicate that your wife feels something towards you even if it's projected as negative, because nobody gets outraged about the things that they don't care about. But pity? Pity is not an intense emotion. It's not an extreme emotion. Pity is what you feel when some sad Facebook post about Syrian refugees and then click away because your life is better than when you don't have to think about that shit and acknowledge it exists. Pity is what your wife feels for you, and that won't change until you dramatically increase your value. Your upgrade in your appearance and wardrobe is not nearly enough likely because your wife knows that any conversation longer than 20 minutes with any woman will reveal that you're a divorced guy with a minimum wage night shift job, which is pretty sad, unless you deliberately hide those facts, which is even sadder. I'm not saying all this to rub your nose in the face of failure and make you feel bad. I'm sure you deal feel bad because let's face it, having your life summed up this way is pretty harrowing and depressing, but there's a silver lining in what you essentially have is nowhere else to go but up. You will either develop and execute on a male action plan and increase your high value enough that your wife may reconsider her decision or she'll leave you anyway, but either way, you're still better off than you were before your red pill journey and you can share the fruits of your higher value with any number of new women. The destinations are different, but the paths are identical. It's not that easy, but it is that simple. On that note, a few thoughts. So. If you've been following the red pill for a while, and I don't mean the spectacle stuff, I mean the actual red pill, the academic stuff, the, the experience stuff, you're going to see a lot of things in there. Like, yeah, there's obviously the high value. There is the high value that's sexually attractive, which he's getting good at. 
And then there's the comfort relationship, desirable stuff. And that's where, that's where all the other failures, the competent stuff, the, the, he has a good job and good with kids. Now, obviously she's in that phase where she wants to reinvigorate the excitement stuff. Right. But if you want to have a relationship with somebody, you need to balance that. You need to have some of those beta bucks qualities. You have to have some ability to add value to the family. So while this guy is doing what he does need to get due to, to fix the alpha side of his relationship, he's done nothing to address the beta side. Now he wants to stay married. So let me ask you this. Fixing the sex life is one thing, but if you want to keep a marriage together, you do have to add some element of value. And that's why a lot of these guys, like what you bring to the table and all that stuff, the value goes both ways. You have to provide exactly uh, what the value the girls wants and she has to provide the value what you want. So that's generally speaking what a relationship is. And this is a great example when I refer to Brifolt's Law, which most guys, if you never heard of it, Brifolt's Law is something from Robert Brifolt, where he says the, the woman of a relationship defines the terms of a relationship. And when there's no value, there's no relationship. And a lot of people think, well, yeah, but men can divorce too. It's like, not really. Like you put yourself in a marriage situation, have it where uh, the wife wants to stay together and the husband doesn't. And the one where the husband wants to stay together and the wife doesn't, which one do you see lasting longer? And here's a great example of that. And the, the last part that I really enjoy on this, because a lot of guys get this wrong too, is, is they'll take a photo of like a supermodel who's like skinny, heroin chic, whatever. And then they'll take another photo of a guy who's done a lot of self-improvement, put on some muscle, but kind of nerdy looking and they go, see, what's the point? You're never going to beat this guy. And like, that's not the point. You're not trying to beat that guy. You're trying to beat the you before you've done anything. So when, when this guy is starting on his map, he may think in his head that I am here to save the marriage, but you can't come here with the expectation of saving the marriage. It does not work. It's a covert contract. It'll blow up in your face. And most of the time it's too late anyway, especially for guys like this. So what you have to do, and we refer to this as the stay plan is the same as the go plan is work on building your alpha qualities, your beta qualities, in whatever percentage you want. If you just want to have hookups, you don't need many beta qualities. If you want to uh, work on a marriage, then yeah, you're going to work on more of those, but it's a calibration thing. And then whatever happens, happens. You have to have independence to whatever outcome there is. And that's basically it for this one. So enjoy yourself. Cheers.